نحن كلنا على خطر نسهة المؤمن الفكر لذة المؤمن العبا نحن كلنا على خطر نسهة المؤمن الفكر لذة المؤمن العبا نحن كلنا على خطر والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولاه إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل الله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا صلوات الله وسلامه عليه عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ثم أما بعد All praise is due to Allah the beneficent, most gracious, most merciful We praise Him, we seek His help and seek His forgiveness we seek refuge in Allah from the evil of ourselves and the evil of our actions. Whomever Allah guides, none can misguide. And whomever Allah leads astray, none can guide. I bear witness, I bear witness that there is no God or deity worthy of worship but Allah alone. And I bear witness that Muhammad وسلم, is his servant and messenger. All you who believe, fear Allah, fear Allah, the fear that He deserves and only die in state of total submission to Allah and to Allah alone. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless each one of you. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the gathering that you're in, it will be in the scale of good deeds the day of judgment. And know that these gatherings are the gatherings that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I can assure you, they will be heavy in the scale of good deeds the day of judgment. Before I begin, I'd like to inform all the brothers in the gym, no training during the lectures. There's few brothers in the gym, no training. So can we just make sure that we tell the brothers gently, please? Okay, they're, they're praying, that's one. First of all, many of the brothers have asked me in regards to anger, how can they control themselves? We need to understand and contemplate that anger is a natural thing that Allah has created in us. And sometimes anger is an act of worship. Anger is good sometimes. And sometimes it's bad. Anger, if it's controlled and after a person restrains themselves and they react in an appropriate manner, it's good. For example, I'm on the street, as I was the other day, and I saw a religious brother. He's got a beard, mashallah. He's wearing this white clothing and he's got a hat on his head. As I was driving up Pascal Vale Road at about 4.30, in that specific area, it's a clear zone. You are not allowed to park there. This brother, may Allah forgive, he stopped his car and he jammed all the cars that are going, they're heading towards north. I was angry. I was angry that a Muslim brother who's supposed to be representing Islam in an appropriate manner he is doing something that displeases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I was also angry the other day when I saw 
an Australian lady, non-Muslim non woman, and she was waiting for a parking, and another Muslim brother, he goes in while she's waiting for someone to leave that parking. And I spoke to the brother gently, and he ended up pulling the car out, and she drove back in. Anger is a good thing that a Muslim should have as long as it's controlled. For example, what is happening to our brothers and sisters overseas, we're angry. We dislike that Muslims are getting killed innocently. This is a natural anger. I dislike that Muslims kill innocent people. As I dislike that non-Muslims kill Muslims. If I was to see a brother at the moment out there on the street harming a non-Muslim, for example, I will be angry and I'll do my utmost best to stop this Muslim brother even, even that he's from my own mother and father. This is permissible anger. And it is an anger which is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allow me to give you an example at the time of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu There was a man that we all know, his name is Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala. And he was a very tough and brave man. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there was something called Sulh al-Hudaybiyah. The Treaty of the Hudaybiyah. Where Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam negotiated with the polytheists at that time that for a period of time there will be no war, no battles. Now Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anh, which we all know of, he was angry at this treaty. He was angry. Now his intention is good. Umar al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, his intention was good. But his anger, he transgressed in his anger radiallahu ta'ala. He came to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. After he realized that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is giving concessions, he said, oh messenger of Allah, are you not the messenger of Allah? He said, are we not Muslims? Are they not polytheists? Are we not on the right and they are on the wrong? <laughs> then he said, لِمَاذَا نَرْضَ الدَّنِيَّ فِي دِينِنَا Why do we expect humiliation in our religion? Why? Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi did not say anything. Then he went to Abu Bakr and he said the same thing. He said, are we not Muslims? Are they not polytheists? Are we not on the truth? Are they not on false? Then why do we expect or accept humiliation in our religion. Abu Bakr said, Be quiet, O Umar. And Ilzam Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Follow the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Listen to me, my dear brothers and sisters. Umar Khattab was angry. And after he said this to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said this to Abu Bakr, he continued on doing good deeds. For the rest of his life, Asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he will compensate what he said to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was begging Allah for all the good deeds because he was the leader of the believers after the death of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did the death of Abu Bakr radiallahu He was the leader of the believers. But look when Umar ibn Khattab became the leader of the believers and he, he, he graduated from the university of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He placed a leader in an area called Egypt. And the leader there, his name is Umar ibn Aas radiallahu ta'ala. And once the son of Umar ibn Aas, the leader in Egypt, him with another Christian man, they were racing, horse racing. And the Christian defeated the son of Umar ibn Aas radiallahu anhu. So the son of Umar got up and he started to weep, to weep the, the Christian. He said, I am the son of the, the honorable, like my father is a leader and my mother is a leader. 
This Christian sent a letter to Umar ibn al-Khattab in Medina. He said, this is what happened. Umar ibn al-Khattab in Medina, he sent a letter to Umar ibn al-As and his son to come all the way from Egypt to Medina. He set them down. And a person should not be haste when they're angry. When you are judging, don't be angry when you are judging. Don't be angry when you are judging because you will judge unjustly. And this has happened at the time of Umar al-Khattab radiallahu an, when he was taking a man who was drunken and he wanted to whip, whip him. And this, and this man, this drunken, abused Umar. Then Umar let him go and the pe people have said, why did you let him go? He said, I fear that I was to punish him for my own advantage. <coughs> For my own sake. So he let him go. Radiallahu an Umar. So Umar al-Khattab radiallahu an, he called upon Umar ibn al-As and his son. And he said to them, tell me the story. And the son of Umar ibn al-As has said exactly what the Christian person has said. Umar ibn al-Khattab, the leader of the believers, he said here, grab the whip and start whipping I'm sorry he said to the Christian he said grab the whip and start whipping the son of Umar ibn al-As radiallahu anhu he started to whip him just to whip him he said when you've had enough let me know when when you've whipped him as much as he whipped you that would be sufficient this is the justice of Islam look at the anger of Umar radiallahu anhu at the time of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and look at his anger which is just as I said there is anger which is permissible Islamic giving and a person gets rewarded for it when you see Muslims are suffering all around the world you should feel something in you you're an abnormal person if you were to see Muslims suffering in Iraq or in Palestine or any of these countries and you don't feel any remorse there's something wrong with your faith now how you react after that that's where a person needs to be patient and needs to analyze the situation and needs to consult the ulama in that specific area if you are in a, in a land of war and people are occupying foreign forces are occupying your country then it is a must upon the Muslims in that area to fight. It's common sense. Someone at the moment wants to attack you inside your house. Even the police would say, defend yourself. A foreign force intend to conquer your country. It is a must upon the Muslims to get up and defend themselves. This is, this is how a Muslim should behave. When a force intends to conquer their country without a shadow, a shadow of doubt there is no dispute amongst the scholars in regards of this whatsoever now we're angry here surely but our anger compared to their anger is totally different their anger with that anger they can react in an appropriate manner defending themselves and our anger is we make dua for them we ask Allah to strengthen them Depending on the situation that you're in. <clears throat> Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he was in Medina, wasn't he angry when he saw the family of Yasser being killed? He was. All he said to them when they were persecuted and they were killed, while they were getting punished, he said, Sabran ala Yasser, mawaidukum al jannah. Or be patient, the family of Yasser. Your destiny is paradise. He was angry. But at that specific time, because of the weakness that the Muslims were in, he said, be patient. <coughs> be patient, O family of Yasir. Your destiny is paradise. That's what you want. That's what every Muslim wants. At the moment, you are in this situation. Be patient. So anger, it is important as long as a person controls themselves 
Now the forbidden anger, the forbidden anger, we've already spoken about the anger which is good, which is an act of worship, which is a, an act of belief. Now allow us to talk about the anger that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dislikes. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has shown us how to control this anger. First of all, a man came to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, O Sini, O oh, Messenger of Allah, recommend to me. Advise me, O oh, Messenger of Allah. He said, don't get angry. Now this person has a problem. Remember that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when someone asks him a question, he receives a revelation. Gabriel would descend upon the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he will tell him to respond. This man has a disease, which is anger. He gets angry, he loses control, he becomes brutal, he, is, he does unjust, he unjusts to himself and others. Then he said to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Oh, Mr. Allah, advise me. He said, لا تغضب, I mean, don't get angry. He said, advise me again. He said, لا تغضب, لا تغضب, don't get angry. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has said a beautiful verse in the Quran, وَالْكَاظِمِينَ الْغَيْرِ and those who control their anger. You have anger, control it. Don't allow anger to control you. We all have anger. It is normal, it is, it's a normal thing that Allah has created in us. But controlling it, that's when you can tell a strong believer. A person who knows Allah. A person that knows that Allah dislikes oppression and dislikes transgression. For that reason, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, وَالْكَاظِمِينَ الْغَيْرِ And those who control their anger. وَالْعَافِينَ عَنِ النَّاسِ And those who forgive people. وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Allah loves good doers. Control anger and forgive people. Allah loves you. Forgive and forget. Listen to me. There's anger here and there is anger here. The anger that Allah likes is the controlled anger. Because when you control your anger, you would know how to react in an appropriate manner. When you can't control your anger, then you'll be harming yourself and harming others and you will burn yourself, you will self-destroy yourself and you'll have enmity and hatred. This is one side of anger. The other anger, you're angry, you have control, you forgive, you give yourself this security and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would love you. Two types of anger. Anger that Allah likes and anger that Allah dislikes. The anger that Allah dislikes is when a person loses it. They go beyond their boundary. For example, someone has cut you off while you're driving the car. Mind you, road rage has skyrocketed in this country. It has doubled in the last five years or so. Someone has cut you off. That is wrong. We're not saying it's right. You're angry. A person catches that person on the red light and he gets up, he gets out of the car and he bashes that person. Now this person, he did wrong. But what you've done is a greater of wrong. Sometimes when you lose control, you do a worse thing than what was, has happened to you. My dear brothers and sisters, how many brothers especially who are in prison because they've lost their temper? In a short period of time, they become angry, they become frustrated, they jumped out of their car or whatever they've done and they ended up harming that person. A person has to learn to control themselves. And mind you, this is a very dangerous disease. This is a very dangerous disease. And if a person does not control it, it will destroy him. A person needs to discipline themselves to control themselves at all time. And that's what will be pleasing to Allah 
subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet Muhammad has said a beautiful hadith. Laysa shadeedu bisra. He is not the strong person that wrestles and fights. No. وَلَكِنَّ الشَّدِيدَ الَّذِي يَلْنِكْ نَفْسَهُ عِنْدَ الْغَضَبُ The strong one is the person that controls themselves at a time of anger. You want to be strong? You want to be tough? It is not the person that wrestles and fights. It is the person that controls themselves at the time of anger. And Muhammad sallallahu said a beautiful hadith. Listen to this hadith which is found in Tirmidhi. مَنْ قَضَمَ غَيْضًا Whomever controls their anger. And in this hadith, Muhammad sallallahu addresses the, the, the men. Because the men are more likely to become angry because of their hormones and the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has assembled. So Muhammad sallallahu said, مَنْ كَظَمَ غَيْظًا Whomever controls their anger. وَهُوَ قَادِرْ أَنْ يُنَفِّذُهُ And they are able to retaliate, for example. This brother here abuses me. I am able to abuse him. This person swears at me. I'm able to swear. But Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi said, whomever controls their anger at a time where they can retaliate, Allah will call them the day of judgment. Allah will call that person the day of judgment. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said that Allah will call that per person the day of judgment because he can show his anger at a time where he can ret retaliate and it will be said to him choose any women of the Hur, women of paradise that you wish. This is the gift that a person will get if they control their anger. And this is specifically for male because they have this problem. We need to understand. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, to every disease, there is a cure. And anger, if it's not controlled, it is a disease. How many people have ended up losing their wives because they were haste, they were violent, they were oppressive? They're angry. They can't control themselves. They end up beating their wife or they say the word divorce and... Listen to me and listen well. A person who gets angry without controlling their anger, they'll end up being by themselves. They will end up being by themselves. They'll be living by themselves. No one would like them. Even a person who becomes very angry, he would start disliking himself or herself. You will start being alone. You'll be neglected by your friends and family members. So a person has to control their anger. Otherwise, you could have a major problem. And treat this sickness like any other sickness. Mind you, AIDS or cancer or hepatitis or whatever, it is a disease that a person will have. And he could die with that disease and inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive their sins if they are patient. But a person who has got this anger problem, they'll burn themselves out. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dislikes this character. And this person will burn his family around him. <coughs> so that is a, a greater of a disease than AIDS or cancer. Because you are hurt. when you have this disease or sickness, it is unto yourself. But when you're angry, you bash this person and you take the rights of this person and you oppress this person and you commit injustice to this person. So that is a greater of a disease than AIDS and cancer. We all know the story of uh, Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala once he was sitting in a gathering and a man was abusing him and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu was present in that gathering. And the Prophet Muhammad was smiling until Abu Bakr could not take it anymore. Abu Bakr. So he started to abuse the man back. Abu Bakr became angry and he started to abuse this man back. So the Prophet Muhammad walked out, he stood up, walked out of this gathering. 
Abu Bakr was a very compassionate man. And he was a very wise man. And he realized that when this man was abusing him, the Prophet was smiling. He was sitting down and smiling. But when he started to abuse this man, the Prophet Muhammad was angry and he walked away. So Abu Bakr ran to the Prophet Muhammad knowing that he's angry. He said, Oh, Messenger of Allah, this man was abusing me. And you were laughing. And when I abused him back, you showed the sign of anger because they can tell the reaction of the Prophet Muhammad. The reaction of the Prophet was sufficient enough for the Sahaba. That's how alert they were, and that's how disciplined they were. He said, Yes, O Abu Bakr. He said, When this man was abusing you, there were angels present. And they were replying upon this man. They were defending you without you knowing. But when you started, when you got angry and you started to abuse this man verbally, then shayateen descended on this gathering. When there's fighting and arguments and dispute, know that shayateen are present. That's why when a person becomes angry, their face becomes red, their cheek blows up, and they become what ayyadabillah uncontrollable. Many people. They become totally insane to an extent where the Fuqaha have said, the jurisprudence have said, if a person loses it totally and he becomes insane and when he says to his wife, you are divorced, it's not counted because they are actually going crazy at that time. They are insane totally. Now I'm not giving a concession. Some of the brothers uh, came up to me the other day and said, Abu Hamza, I was angry. And I said to my wife, divorce. We're talking about two different anger. Anger when a person loses it totally, they can't even remember what they've said. We're not <laughs> expecting a person to come to his wife saying to her, my dear honey, my dear wife, you are divorced. Surely that's not going to happen. Surely he's going to be angry. But there's two different anger, loss of control totally, which is not counted, and a normal anger which takes place. And that's counted. That is counted. When a person says to his wife, you are divorced, that is counted. He's got two more chances. You should fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is not a game. So for that reason, a person has to control themselves at all time. Control yourself. Make sure that you restrain yourself from saying Words that you'll be sorry about. Remember also, my dear brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in Al-Quran, وَمَا يَلْفِظُ مِنْ قَوْلٍ إِلَّا لَدَيْهِ رَقِيبٌ عَتِيبٌ There is not a word that you utter, my dear brother and sister, except there's a raqib. Raqib is an angel on your right hand side that writes everything that you do of good. And atib is the one on the left hand side. Every word that you utter, my dear brother and my dear sister, it is written, it is either for you or against you. It will be either a witness for you or against you. Everything that you say. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said this in Al Quran also in Surah Al Kahf. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, Wa al kitab. And the book will be placed. Everyone will have a book. Abu Hamza, at that specific day, at that specific hour, he said this. He abused this person. He was generous. This. Everything will be in details. That day the book will be placed. And you will find the disbelievers, those transgressors, they, they are frightened from what's in it. Because remember, you know, sometimes you probably forget what you've done yesterday or a month, or especially me, I forget, subhanAllah, often. That day, Allah will give you memory that you will remember everything and every point and everything that you've uttered and every incident that you have been through. Everything you remember. Subhanallah al -Azim. Now, wa wudi al-kitab, that day the book will be placed. Fatar al-mujrimina mushfiqina min mafi. 
ويقولون ما لي هذا الكتاب لا يغادر صغيرة ولا كبيرة إلا أحصاها ووجدوا ما عملوا حاضرا A person would say what is it with this book that there is nothing small or big that it's it has not recorded ووجدوا ما عملوا حاضرا and they see what they have done present in front of them ولا يظلم ربك أحدا and Allah does not oppress anyone Allah does not oppress anyone. He's your book. That's your record. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in another verse in the Quran, after a'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajim, yawma idhin tu'aradoona la takhfa minkum khafiyah. Indeed, that day, everything will be exposed. Nothing will be hidden. Nothing will be. يوم إذا تعرضون لا تخفى منكم خاف فأما من أوتي كتابه بيمينه and it is for those who have taken their book their record in their right hand taken in their right hand they are overwhelmed سبحان الله العظيم listen to to the amazing verse of the Quran فأما من أوتي كتابه بيمينه فيقول ها أمقرأ كتاب this person will be overwhelmed this brother and sister, they will be overwhelmed. They would say, hey, people, get up. Listen, read my record. I am successful. Jannah is for me. Ya Rabb, I ask you, oh Allah, every person here, every brother and every sister, all of our families, all of the Muslims, all of the non-Muslims, when they embrace Islam, they will be saying this. Ya Rabb. They will say, hey, hey, um, Indeed, I knew that I was to meet my record. Indeed, he's in a, a place where he's pleased, radia, content. Allahu Akbar. This is how it would be. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would say, Kulu wa shrabu haniyan bima aslaftum fil ayyam al-khali. Eat and drink. Hani and congratulation with what you have done previously. وَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ بِشِمَالِهِ And for those who have taken their record in their left hand. يَقُولُ يَا لَيْتَنِي لَمْ أُوْتَ كِتَابِهِ A person would say, I wish that I did not know what my results and my record and my book is. وَلَمْ أَدْرِ مَا حِسَابِ And I wish that I never knew what my result is. Would be. Ya laytaha kanat al qadiya. I wish that was the end of me. Ma aghna anni maliya. What has my wealth prevailed for me? What has my wealth done to me? Halaka anni sultaniya. Those that I used to back, those presidents and those kings and those shaitans and all. What have they done to me? These people that I've backed and supported. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would say, خُذُوه فَغُلُّوه ثُمَّ الْجَحِيمَ صَلُّوه Take him and throw him and cast him in hell وَلْعِيَاتِ بِنَّهِ A person has to know that everything that they do and they will say it is written for them or against them. نسأل الله سبحانه و تعالى العفو والعفو أبو الدرداء one of the sahaba رضي الله عنه he said, يا رسول الله دلني على عمل يدخلني الجنة. الله أكبر. He said, Oh Messenger of Allah, this Abu Darda. He said, Oh Messenger of Allah, tell me about an action that would lead me to paradise. He said, لا تغضب. Don't get angry. Don't get angry. Control yourself. And also. وفي حديث إذا غضب أحدكم وهو قائم محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم has told us when a person is angry if you're angry standing then sit فإلا فليطجع if you're still angry when you're sitting lay on the ground control yourself we've already spoken about the importance of control now let us talk about how a person should control themselves 
we've we've actually verified the sickness. Now let us talk about how we can resolve this disease that we have. First of all, my dear brothers. First of all, my dear brothers and sisters, knowledge. Are they equal those who have knowledge and those who don't have knowledge? With knowledge, you would know how to drive a car. With knowledge, you would know how to read and write. Knowledge. That's right. With knowledge, knowledge is compulsory upon every Muslim and Muslim. Talab al farid ala kul Muslim. Seeking knowledge is compulsory upon every Muslim. Male and female. Now, first of all, a person needs to understand the virtue of controlling one's anger is that Allah who loves you. You're angry now? If I was to tell you, brother, control your anger. That's okay. Control. Just calm down. Don't burn yourself out. Know that Allah loves you. And those who control their anger. And those who forgive people, Allah loves them. Allah loves the good doers. So understand this. When you're going to go beyond your limit, know that if you control yourself, Allah loves you. Wallahi Azim, Allah loves you. Understand this. Also, because you have reached that level of anger, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is stronger than you. And know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dislikes those that transgress and go beyond the boundary. Don't oppress others because one day you'll be oppressed. Again, when a person reaches that level of anger, sometimes they don't see the truth. They don't see the truth. They, they become so erupt, they don't see the truth anymore. They don't see justice whatsoever. Also, when a person becomes angry, I want you to look at someone else who becomes angry. And look how uncontrollable they become. And how ugly they look. You know, picture yourself when you're angry. How you become so, so frustrated. Your face becomes red and cheek blows up and this and that. And you don't want to listen to anyone. Picture yourself in that position. Maybe, you know, tell your wife when you're angry to take a photo of you. You might, you know, grab the camera and smash it over your head. But, <laughs> but you know, honestly, try to control yourself. It is vital that we understand this. Because I fear that many of the brothers and sisters have that sickness and problem. And sometimes they do transgress. And also, there are actions that a person should fulfill. As Muhammad said when he saw a man that was very angry, he said, All these uh, two people actually, he said, All this person, these people need to say is, A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim. This is the, the, the time where the shaitan enters inside the body. When you become angry, say repeatedly, A'udhu billahi min shaitan A'udhu billahi min shaitan A'udhu billahi min shaitan Say it. My dear brother, when you become angry, leave that scene that you're in. You're angry with your brother or your, whomever, your wife, or try to withdraw from that position that you're in. Go and make wudu. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, that ghadab anger is from shaitan. Okay? Ghadab is from shaitan. So it's important for us to know how to control ourselves in these positions. Otherwise we could lose those who we love most. So I beg the brothers and sisters to always remember this. And also, Jaya Salman ila Ali. Salman, radiallahu an, he came to Ali, radiallahu ta'ala an. And he said, Man ladhi yuba'anya an ghadab Allah? What distanced me from the anger of Allah? He said, anger. He said, if you become angry with ayyadu billah, he said to him, what keeps you or brings you close to the anger of Allah is when you're angry. So don't get angry and Allah will not be angry from you. Simple as that. 
And a man said to Abu Bakr radiallahu an, he said to him, La usabban naka sabban yadkhulu ma'aka al-qabr. Faqala ma'aka, wallahi la yadkhul ma'aka. Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala an, a man said to him, I'm gonna abuse you in a manner that you will enter inside the grave with. I'm gonna spirit you so much and abuse you that anger is going to enter inside your graveyard. He said, in your graveyard, not in my graveyard. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be of those that control their anger at all time so they can be the type of people that will be an example to others around them. And especially us Muslims, we are an example in being in this country. So we should always behave.